Hello everyone. Welcome to Yashoda Hospitals, the health talk session. We are here today to answer all your health related queries by expert doctors here. The clinical picture of COVID has become more recognizable in the recent times. It is no longer confined only to the respiratory system. In addition to the common symptoms, it also presents with various neurological symptoms and complications. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and today we have with us Dr. Jaydeep Pre Chowdhury, Senior Consultant, Neurophysician from Yashoda Hospitals, Somaji Guda. Welcome, sir. So to start with, sir, what is your health mantra and how are you coping up and uh, how are you balancing both your professional and personal life? Yes, this is a difficult time and uh, second or third wave of COVID is going to be very difficult for all of us uh, health workers and when I am working in the wards and seeing COVID patients, I am extra careful because we should not carry the ho infection home and so at home we are planning and always maintaining distance when we talk to our relatives and to our children. At work, yes, here also we are having a good distance between each of us who are working and we are always protected with our masks and always continuously using sanitizer. Off time, I am doing some walking so that keep my lungs okay. Do share us your health mantra and post your queries on this topic and we will get them answered right away. So sir, did you see any difference in presentation this time compared to the first wave from your logical point of view? This time um, we are seeing younger people coming in and uh, they are having a significant amount of uh, stroke in them and many people are coming with a severe headache that was not there in the previous and also many people are having uh, visual difficulty and having a weakness of the face and many of them are turning to have that black fungus the mucor. So moving on to a few questions from what we got from our social media. We got Mr. Ramesh from Mehbub Nagar asking us what is brain fog and how is it different in this COVID infection? Brain fog is a state of brain confusion. When the thinking and the clarity comes down. As you know in a foggy climate we cannot see a far off distance. Similarly when a person is having brain fog he or she will not be able to realize uh, what is happening around, they will be confused and they will not be able to take decisions correctly. So it is a state of brain confusion and that happens in patients with COVID. Now the causes of this confusion may be because of the infection itself, because of decreased oxygen into the brain cells or it can be because of the medications that they are being using uh, for the treatment of COVID. Sometimes it can be because of the cytokine storm or the abnormal in inflammatory response to COVID. So how long do you think this is going to last? Usually it doesn't last for a long time. It usually gets better within 7 to 10 days with treatment and uh, maximum it can last for 10 days. So now talking about headaches, we have Mr. Manoj from Mumbai asking us that he is known case of migraine and how different are the COVID headaches presenting? Uh, patients with migraine, uh, when they have COVID, uh, they can have increased numbers of headache. So, uh, but when if the person is not a migraineer, COVID itself can cause headache. COVID fever can cause headache and these type of headaches are usually, COVID headaches are usually the headache is bilateral on both the sides of the head and sometimes inside the eyes and when they move their head, they feel bad or pain, but they don't vomit. A migrainer usually has a typical one-sided headache and they feel uh, nauseous and they like to vomit. At the same time, uh, they can have also uh, photophobia or phonophobia that they will be irritable to loud sounds and light. A COVID patient is not so much irritable to light and sound. Okay, apart from headache, are there any other neurological symptoms one should look out for when suspecting COVID infection? Yes. Yeah, when uh, there is COVID infection, we all know that there will be a loss of taste and smell and it comes usually on the second week and it's okay, it comes during the recovery phase, we should be aware of that and uh, we know that people get headache and some people develop weakness of the uh, facial muscles and some people do develop stroke, that means weakness of the face, hand and the leg. Some people may have visual uh, problem because of COVID and because of stroke. 
at the same time we should be also aware that sometimes severe muscle pain muscle weakness can come during covid and some people can develop weakness of legs due to neuropathy that is involvement of the nerves so talking about stroke we have mr haribe asking us from assam why is there stroke in covid infection and what should one do to prevent it Yes, uh, as we all know that COVID infection causes uh, increased thrombogenicity of the blood, that the blood tends to clot faster. So a person who is having COVID, uh, there, there is a tendency that the blood can clot and if it clots inside the brain, it can cause stroke. To prevent that, I think uh, we are using uh, blood thinners uh, during the COVID infection and uh, after the infection also is over, we need to continue this blood thinner for another two to four weeks. to prevent stroke after recovery from covid so did we see a uh, presenting of stroke even in young adults as well yes this time as i told you earlier that uh, too many young people are coming in uh, with covid and around 3 to 4 every 100 are having stroke so apart from stroke sir what are the short term and long term complications one should expect from neurological point of view so uh, short term complications will be headache brain fog uh, that means confusion and insomnia so people develop a, a lack of sleep you know they don't sleep well long term complication or long covid syndromes are associated with myalgia fatigue and not able to carry out his day to day activities feel fatigue and tired in the evening hours and some people do develop weakness of the muscles and also the weakness of the uh, lower limbs uh, due to via neuropathy so moving on to the next question we have mr alok asking us from west bengal he wants to know why is there loss of smell and taste during covid infection and is it temporary or permanent the loss of taste and smell in covid is because of the involvement of the smelling nerve that is the first olfactory nerve that is the nerve to that takes us the smell into our brain the covid virus seems to infect those nerves and the nerve fibers and is responsible for decreasing the action of the nerve and that's the reason we don't have a problem of smelling objects similarly it also affects the taste buds also up in our tongue and the taste sensation also comes down for the similar reason so how long would this last it usually comes after uh, the first week of covid and usually lasts for maximum 2 to 3 weeks okay so that's just temporary it's a temporary problem, problem. So now with so much stress around, uh, what is the mental impact what one is having uh, with prolonged stay in ICU? Yes, when a person is put into ICU and uh, they are requiring oxygen and uh, they are requiring high dose of oxygen, and they are aware of that that uh, this is uh, the oxygen is their life, so they get anxious and uh, what will happen if uh, I am not able to breathe despite oxygen? and they will be seeing on the sides that some people may be requiring <coughs> ventilatory supports and all so these all these causes uh, uh, anxiety in them and all we know that long time staying in icu can cause icu psychosis that means uh, this icu psychosis is because of uh, being away from family members and only with the doctors and the nursing staff and other caregiver uh, workers in the hospital so these are a typical psychosis sets into in them and they get mentally very much aggressive a fear of death comes into them so moving on to the next question we have ms suleka asking us from vijayawada she wants to know that does covid aggravate alzheimers or parkinson's disease because his father is getting treated for alzheimers yes covid do uh, cause increase uh, problems in patients who having alzheimers disease uh, their memory seems to worsen their cognitive uh, behaviors worsen during alzheimers uh, during covid uh, time it's because not only the covid virus or the covid infection causes a uh, problem in their brain because we all know that in alzheimers disease people forget and they cannot do their day to day activity uh, very well and always require support of people because of their falling memories covid infection do causes changes in the brain and that causes uh, problems uh, in them because we know that they have a decreased cognitive reserve or cognitive resilience and that is the one of the reason in alzheimer's disease uh, the dementia part or the memory part seems to worsen 
So what impact is the elderly age group people are having because of this COVID appropriate behavior and now that the movements are also restricted in all the ways? So how do you think they should stay positive and cope with the situation? So it is causing a significant impact in that group of people you told who are elderly, who have mild dementia, having uh, in the population. Uh, because they are seeing their carers are not coming, the carers are wearing masks and many people are stopped coming home. They are not able to go out and meet their friends whom we have to meet in the colony. So it is causing a significant impact in them and because of this impact there is a significant decrease in their cognitive abilities. And it has been found in some studies that yes they do badly over time and their dementia seems to have worsening over, during these days. So the next question, we have Mr. Ashok asking us from Wiser. He wants to know, what does COVID infection affect the memory? COVID infection can affect memory. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, during the brain fog time, when the brain confusion time, the memory seems to go down. And uh, there is specific uh, instances we have seen patients where post-COVID there is their, their memory loss. And sometimes because of the stroke itself, there may be some amount of problem with the memory. So COVID infection can cause memory impairment. So sir, after recovery from COVID, did you notice or did you see any behavioral changes in patients? Yes, uh, we have seen a couple of patients who uh, after recovery from COVID, um, they develop some amount of uh, problems uh, in their behavior. Mostly uh, they have lack of sleep and sometimes they become aggressive. This aggressive behavior, confusion and lack of sleep causes trouble in them uh, to adjust with the family and some people uh, develop little paranoid behavior we have some people who have developed paranoid behavior and some people are very depressed so these are the behavior changes we have seen in couple of patients we have seen our outpatient after they recovered from covid so sir with the current pandemic and the strict uh, protocols what is laid down many of the patients would be neglecting their other neurological diseases as well so how do you think they should go about with this yeah, it's better not to neglect uh, existing neurological problems because neurological problems are chronic problems like epilepsy, migraine, previous history of stroke and Parkinson's disease and other problems. So uh, actually uh, for the benefit of the people, uh, Dashoda Hospital, uh, we are running the teleconsultation services and I will um, request people to take uh, the advantage of these services and reach to the consultant uh, persons whom they are consulting uh, with the help and not to neglect the older disease because uh, suddenly worsening of the older disease can also cause problem during these pandemic times. So sir, with uh, so much uncertainty ahead, most of us are anxious and worried about the current situation. So how do you think one should deal with the stress and what advice you would like to give them? So as we all know that uh, it's a crazy time around and we are all anxious. Uh, not only the patients, the caregivers, the doctors, the um, health staff, and the entire working force. So we have to be calm and we have to understand that it's the wave and it will go over and it will pass over maybe four to eight weeks. So we have to um, stay calm and cool and follow all the major protocols that has been laid down. That means we have to wear a mask all the time and avoid uh, meeting people without any requirement, avoid all gatherings, use sanitizer time to time and for the people who are working in the hospital and are frontline workers, they have to remember that they should not carry a single infection home because in home their uh, people are there and their family is there and they should not get infected. So at home also they should sanitize themselves completely and probably use a mask continuously when they talk to their family or spouses. I hope with this, this time will pass off and uh, very soon we will be or the most of the countrymen will be vaccinated and then our stress may come down. So this brings us to the end of the session. Do join us on next Sunday and we will post the topic shortly. Thank you.